everything you you did in your film in some way because it takes on uh, you know the traditions and uh, the educations and every, everything is political you know so you are a kind of let's say a joyous activist a <laughs> playful activist yeah. in some way for me like my my idea of you as a filmmaker yeah. you are capable to treat important important issues with this kind of uh, with a bravery that is also joyful and uh, i think it's your signature it's there is a an energy behind and there is also a music behind i see kind of music all the time when even music is not there um, do you think that women are kind of activists anyway? You know what? I think they are. And that's that's why the ending of the film that there is. So all these women I met, they did question, but they were not questioning enough or they were not doing it as a community and they were not... I think there is an activist inside everybody who who is wanting change, who is questioning, you know? That's why there are these small, small acts of rebellion which are ha happening, but it's not happening together. I think if, if, if it's acknowledged and it's done as a community, um, because we also as women, we've been conditioned to stand against each other most of the time. So we are actually responsible as a community of women, we are responsible for each other. So today, if I'm an educated woman who's financially aware or financially independent and I go through domestic violence and I'm okay with it, I'm responsible for 30 other women, millions of other women who will go through it because the, 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 the communication here is it's okay, that's her role, you know, she might, she might be doing this great job and everything, but this is her role. So when you suffer things, when, when you could break out of it, you have to understand that you are responsible for many such women who will go through the same fate because you didn't stand up for it. You know, and there are people, women who are in positions where they can stand up against it, who are not because they are still bowed down by their conditioning. So I'm sorry, I don't know whether I answered your question. Or yeah, yeah, no, no, you yeah, answered yeah, it very well. Yeah. So in fact, so when, uh, what do you look in a movie? So when you decide to, what you have, an idea, like a cooking your head for, what's it generally starts with a person so it starts with the character more than the plot mm -hmm. uh, and I'm very interested in psyche of characters so it generally starts in the mind of a character so I'm quite a nutcase when I'm writing my scripts <laughs> <laughs> because I think I become a schizophrenic I become almost everybody <laughs> yeah so it generally starts with a person and I try to find their story and then suddenly these other characters pop into the picture. And um, and you are interested also in the like the, the, the social part of their lives, like where these characters are, where they live, what condition are yeah. put in, you know? For me that's just so interesting that I truly believe because Whatever films I've seen might be in the remotest part of the world. But if I connect to that film emotionally, I can believe that story happening in my backyard, you know. So I think film is actually such a strong tool because it uses emotions to talk to people. We can tell so many, so many more stories over here, you know. Um, I'm sorry, what was the question? No, in the sense yeah. of the social, if you see... Yes, so yeah. for me, for me, so that was my experiment in my head that I realized I'm making a very universal story because that's the way people had reacted to my script. But still I am basing it so authentically in this village, in this milieu, in this community who has this set of rules. They're just a small little village in the middle of nowhere where there is very little access to information or otherwise. And then that little story has a resonance into larger and larger in Toronto and America. That's so interesting. So yeah, for me, the, the social placement of that story 
and I believe that stories that I will tell will have a universal resonance because I find that core within the story. So through the character, I'm actually finding that core that I know will will reach out to you know a universal audience, um. which is something actually my editor told me, Kevin Tent. He said the first time I watched your film. I was first struck with the beauty. Oh my God, this exotic land. Oh, they wear such beautiful colors. These women are so gorgeous. These men are so, what faces these are. And then he said that I suddenly started feeling like, oh my God, is this what is going on in India? No wonder all the rapes that are happening. This is a, this is a circumstance in India. And he said somewhere by the end of your film, I started feeling, no, it's happening in America too. And that's shocking that this small little village where there's little information and no education, that if that same thing is happening in America, what's our excuse? Because we said education will take away all these prejudices, but it didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So. So your films are universal. So the themes yeah. that you are yeah. facing there, or you deal with. Absolutely, they are universal. Yeah, are universal. If it was wiped out from ninety percent of the world, it will not happen in ten percent. So it has to be together. We can't be sitting on judgmental chairs of, oh, it's all happening there, or it's all happening in China, and it's all happening in India. We have to acknowledge if this circumstance exists, we are all responsible for it as human beings. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so you believe that a filmmaker has a kind of a duty in some yeah. way. Yeah. We, 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 uh, we have to remind people because I get asked this question very often in my Q&A's oh my god is this really happening in India I have to remind them and the moment I do you will not believe it like the women who asked me that question who were alienating themselves and saying it's happening in India are the same women who will meet me after the screening and say you're absolutely right my sister is going through this or my friend is going through this so again it's conditioning and I went through that when I came back from the villages to Bombay and I said Oh, I have to tell the story of this village. And then when I started writing it, I said, Oh my God, this character is this person I know. This character is this person I know right here in Bombay. So let's not, as human beings, say it's their problem or it's happening there. Let's acknowledge it. Because if, if it's, even if it's happening in 1% of the world, as human beings, we are all responsible for it. So you are, uh, you are part of the new independent community. Indian filmmakers community. Is that correct? Yes. Do you feel um, uh, so? It's a very interesting new community, it I is. think. Very interesting. It's very interesting. It has such a variety of voices yeah. and expressions. And I'm so happy. It's very difficult for all of us, which is what we connected with each other about. But still, we are putting our film out there. So there is some power that is with us though we feel very powerless because people don't finance us and stuff. But I think we should just keep going at it and keep putting our films out there. So as a woman, you feel different in this group, in this community? You feel like a, a little bit isolated or you just, you are together, you just go together and... Okay, so people tell me that there are a lot of people prejudiced against women, but I think, and I owe this to my parents, that. I never felt different as a woman. So sometimes maybe the prejudice is happening around me, but I don't notice it. I'm just like this bull who's going for what I want. <laughs> so I've forgotten. I on a set, I don't I don't remember that I'm a woman. I'm I'm an individual. And even if somebody is trying to treat me badly, I don't get it, I think. So I'm not really I, I don't feel different from anybody else. Whether it's the power I feel sitting in a room full of male filmmakers or it's on my set which will which still date despite a huge increase in the number of women is still I think 70% male I have I've never felt that I was the less represented one because I, in those circumstances I forget that I'm a man or a woman are you living in a, in a majority of your time in, in India or here in, in LA I, I actually, in the last three years, I've spent my majority of my time in LA. That's because I was doing my post-production here. And the last one year, I've been a nomad, actually, traveling to festivals and 
having these beautiful discussions all over the world. But uh, yeah, I live in Bombay most of the time. Yeah. So you just won the Impact Award, uh, award yeah. at the Stockholm Film Festival. Yes. So what that meant for you, that okay, prize? So I didn't realize the, the hugeness of this Impact Award because it is the first year that they started this Impact Award. When I reached Stockholm and I realized, realized that the jury was headed by IVV, it suddenly, I realized, oh my God, this is something really important. And uh, then I met the seven filmmakers who had been nominated. And I realized, you know, I'm in really, really, really like empowered company and all of them had had such amazing stories of how they made their films and they all made amazing films. Um, so it's it's a huge, huge honor for Paj to win that award. It also has attached to it a very big sum of money. I think it's the largest sum of money given for a film across the world. So I have to is, How much is that? Can you One million krona. So I'm a Swedish millionaire right now. <laughs> oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> so the day I got to know that I won it, you know, I hugged the director Git and I said, you know what, I can repay all my loans of parched. <laughs> and she's like, no darling, I think it comes with certain conditions attached. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so, but it's a beautiful prize for the development of my future projects. So that is also something that I will need and I'm so, so grateful. And I almost, I loved Stockholm too as a city. And I hope I go back to Sweden and make a film there one day. Mm, yeah. I have a connection with them now. Oh, wonderful, very, wonderful. very deep connection, yes. Yeah, I, I will meet uh, Anna Serner next week. So wow. this is, I will tell her. Yes, if yeah. there is anybody in Sweden who would like me to make a film there, I'm, I'm very, very open to that. Wonderful, wonderful. So what's your next, pro next project? Right now, my next project are like five or six different ideas which I'm working on. And you know, as a filmmaker, you don't know which one will take off. And First. sometimes even your head suddenly goes into then one direction. So right now I'm working with five babies. No one has taken priority as of now. Uh, but they're all very, very interesting and very different projects. So, exciting. So, something I wanted to really ask is, uh, how was worked with this wonderful cast? Because the cast is amazing. Those girls are mesmerizing. So, what did you do? What, what, what happened with, with you? How can you tell uh, uh, something about uh, the casting uh, process? How did you choose the girls, the actresses? And how did you work with them? So, um Tanishta, who plays Rani, and uh, Radhika were the first two people I met, uh, and I cast them. And uh, I already knew I'm starting on very high ground because they are both brilliant, brilliant actresses and super perceptive and super intelligent girls. Yeah. Um, then I got on a casting director who's one of the most talented casting directors in India called Mukesh Chabra. And then we started this whole process of auditions. Of all the girls, Bijli was the most difficult to find for some strange reason. You know, you, generally when you're casting, one thing gets stuck always. And I've always experienced this. This one character will always get stuck and then ah, last minute you find them. So, and I think I found the most amazing Bijli, Surveen. What, what an amazing actress and what abandon and what passion she put into that character. So it started with already doing casting some of the most amazing actors. Um, in fact, a lot of people in the West say these girls must be the biggest superstars in India, and I really wish there's a day that these girls be a su you know be superstars. In I, India I thought the same that yeah. I thought they they are kind of super stars. Unfortunately, not, but they will. I am hopeful. Yes. Yeah, they absolutely will. In fact, all the male actors also in my film, I am amazed at their performances. They are all so brilliant, and they actually were the characters. It didn't feel like, you know, uh, they were actors playing these roles. They felt mm -hmm. like they belonged to that village. They slept in that hut. So for that, 
I do a lot of workshops with my actors. Mm. Um, it starts with conversations of judgment and because sometimes an actor is playing a role from a point of judgment. He's thinking I'm playing this horrible guy and for me that's wrong. He has to find the heart of the guy even if he's the horrible guy. So, you know, starting from that process and then understanding as much as we can. So we find like the full history of this man from that time that he was a child to now, what his journey been like, what are the circumstances. So I do, I do that with as many characters as possible and so then it becomes, they become them. You know, if I were to ask my actor that what were you doing when you were five years old, they already, so they create those stories, they, they become a complete, they have a history, they have a life. So when you walk into that, then as an actor, it becomes so effortless. So uh, I think and all the performances were effortless because all of them were very perceptive people also. And they actually came to this film with complete surrender for which I really am grateful and thankful to them and like respect. <laughs> so it's like there is a flow in your film yeah. and everything is going with that flow. Yes. There is so not I have the to kind tell you an interesting story. So when we were world premiering in Toronto, um, there was this discussion that who will go on stage to do the Q&A and all the three actresses were going to be there. And uh, I said, I'll go with them and my cinematographer, Russell Carpenter, who also was attending and my producer. They said, no, you don't need to get the girls, you know, uh, because it'll be in English. I was like, Hello. <laughs> okay, don't think these girls are the village women you saw. And sure enough, my girls dressed up in their gowns and and everybody was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's how good they are, that they can transform so brilliantly. And also this idea because they are, what, from India, from that village, yeah, yeah. dressed in that way. It didn't yes. make a documentary, it's not a documentary, it's a exactly. film, it's so they actor. are actors. So, but people thought it was so real and that's a huge compliment to the film. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, yeah, wonderful. And um, so how, how long it takes this process, this kind of workshop with them? How? I think for past I got about a month and a half when I was meeting all the actors constantly. To, together? Uh, you work together or you uh, work separately? No, so first I work separately, then I team them together like Rajesh and Bijli. Mm -hmm. Then I do the group scenes, especially if it's a husband and wife because sometimes you can just clearly see if they're acting because if you're a husband and wife who've lived together for 15 years, it has to look like that. You know, and it's in the smallest things that uh, it's a giveaway. Uh, like with Tanishta and Gulab, we actually did meditations, just holding each other's hands. So, anything, I mean, I, I don't know, I'm a very instinctive person and I feel the energy and I create that in the moment, whatever it takes. Uh, like Gulab, I met directly on set, I mean, a few days before the shoot, but... So, with him, I was doing the workshops on Skype because he lives in another city and we could not afford to, you know, fly him down and put him up for that longer time. But he's another perceptive and very intelligent boy at just 15. He's, his brain is like somewhere else. We yeah. talked about sexuality and everything and he's, oh, amazing. He's, um, he's amazing. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. He's amazing. You yeah. do completely believe him. Absolutely. Yeah. And that uh, frustrated sexual energy that he brought into his character was like amazing. Yeah. And um, so how long it take? you to, to put together the financing of this film? Uh, um. uh, okay, like I told you, my uh, husband told me, go make the film that you want, I will produce it. He's a cinematographer, but he gave up his job for like two years to, to, to follow to him. Parched. It was a very tough promise he made, but we were also a bit reckless because we had this amazing DP, Russell, who you know, who had agreed to do the film and we had already made him wait for a month because of lack of finance. So the moment we had his ne next chunk of dates, we just recklessly went to shoot. We did have a little bit. So the, actually my husband went through the toughest times because as we were shooting, we were running out of money. Then he was arranging for some money. We ran out of money. 
but I think we are very blessed both of us because we are surrounded by angels it was friends neighbors just everybody who contributed to this film and made it possible so yeah or we are guarded by all these amazing angels even our two investors who put in the big chunks of money are really beautiful beautiful people wonderful so everybody uh, yeah so this film had to be made it had a life of its own you know they would push us to the edge there were times where i thought i have to just pack up and go back because we don't have any money but every time we were at the edge there would be just like one one trickle i think when you are going to make something powerful and beautiful that the road is really tough but uh, one has to just hang in there i think it shows yeah um it shows and you didn't uh, left outside a kind of beauty a kind of an aesthetic because of the money you just no. did everything even we didn't compromise when, when i was in la and i was working with the most beautiful editor kevin and we ran out of money again but we didn't we didn't like pack up and say okay we'll go and do it somewhere cheap we just gave the film everything it deserved in the best possible way and uh, thanks to everybody who supported us in this and i hope we make some money so that we can repay oh, well. everything <laughs> It yeah, will, yeah. Uh, it will, uh, you know, it will because uh, it it is it, it's beautiful, it's um, original, it's full of energy. It's a lesson of life. Yeah. You you come out from the film like, oh my God, you have all this uh, kind of resonance, like you said yeah. before. So I think um, people will respond very well. In fact. Uh, People is uh, uh, very important in the sense, you know, they go to the movies yes, yes. <laughs> and they buy tickets. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and they award you at the uh, Indian Film Festival with yes. the, the, the prize, the, yes. the major award, because, because it is a film of the people, for the people, and it's done in a very amazing way. So... Um, I'm a huge fan of yours, so you see that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, uh, good luck with everything and good luck with your next project. Yes, and, and I, I, I hope I get to work with somebody as passionate as you and with such a practical but still such an empowered uh, perspective of the world that we are in right now or the space they are, that we are in and the need to make such films. So I really hope I get to work with you one day. Yeah, me too. Yes. Me too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.